What's up, old Power Ass Crew? Today we're talking about steering stabilizers. Da da. Singles and duels. And do they help death wobble? <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face, really. Okay, first, let's talk about the intentions of a steering stabilizer. What steering stabilizer is meant for is like if you hit uh, potholes, whatever, sometimes you feel your wheel do this number right here is jerk like that. That's called bump steer. There's a couple things that causes bump steer. One is like if you hit you know, the side of the tire, okay, it pushes the tire over to the side. Uh, sometimes a pothole or a curb or something like that. If you hit a curb too hard, it'll make your wheel snatch over. That steering stabilizer helps lessen that impact of his wheel gets snatched on your hand like that. Or say for instance, you're out wheeling and you get up on the side of a rock and that rock pushes your tire over again, steering stabilizer will help control that forceful impact of it being pushed over. Now, another thing is like, uh, if you lifted your rig and you didn't do it correctly, your track bar and your drag link has to be at the exact same angle, or at least really, really, really close. Now, if you've lifted your rig and your track bar and your steering um, drag link are two different angles, every time you hit a bump and your suspension compresses, it's gonna push your steering wheel, therefore bump steer. So that is a suspension geometry issue and not a steering stabilizer issue. Now here comes the internet argument all over the world, death wobble. I'll put another, to put dual stabilizers on front of my Jeep and it'll fix that death wobble. No, it won't. Here's the deal, people. If you've got death wobble, if you truly have death wobble, you've got issues, ball joints, track bar, so many. We'll talk about that in a moment when we get up the front of this Jeep right here and I'll point all that stuff out to you. There's so many different things that can cause death wobble and putting dual stabilizers on it is not gonna fix it. Will it mask it? Will it suppress it? Eh, yes, it can. But if you put dual stabilizers on it and now you've got a good solid steer and you don't get that you know, death wobble, you're still masking a problem. you got to find that problem. A good front end setup, proper geometry, proper, uh, proper drag link, proper track bar, all that stuff, you can run without a stabilizer and be fine. If your suspension is correct, all your front end components are, are solid. You don't technically need one. My YJ, I don't run one. Uh, I know a few TJs don't run one. So it's all about if your front end is set up correctly and all your suspension components are in good shape. So let's get underneath the front of this rig and we'll talk about what can cause death wobble. Now after we talk about all the components that can cause death wobble, we'll get on with the install of a steering stabilizer. Before we move on with the death wobble, let's look at one thing. This bar right here, that's your drag link. This bar right here is your track bar. Notice when I move the camera up, how similar the angle is between the two. Oftentimes people will lift their suspension and do all kinds of stuff, but they won't do what's needed to correct the angles. Your track bar, I mean your drag link comes off your pitman arm here, comes down, connects to your knuckle over here, which pushes your tire back and forth, which takes your tire rod and pushes the two tires in unison with each other. So what happens a lot of times is people will do their lifts or whatever, and the angle between your track bar and your drag link will be out of skew. There will not be this within a degree or two the same angle. So that will cause your bump steer because when the suspension compresses, this track bar right here forces your front axle to move out an arc. Arc being this is the end of your arc here and the center of your arc is right there. So whenever your suspension compresses, it drops like it's right here. You notice my thumb runs at an arc or kind of like a semicircle, however you want, whatever geometry you want to look at. So you notice my thumb goes at an arc, which pushes the axle back and forth like this. So if your drag link is at the same angle as your track bar, the drag link and that will travel at the, at the same kind of similar arc. If they're at different angles, the arcs will be different. So therefore, that will cause your bump steer. Now, let's talk about the symptoms for death wobble. The biggest reason for death wobble is at the end of these right here, right there, that's on your track bar, right there, and right there. You got bushings up inside there. Rigs that are wheeled pretty heavy, those bushings right there take a heavy beating. After a while, those bushings get weak, and they just get really soft and spongy. So what happens, when you're going down the road, you hit a bump or something like that, the whole front axle starts moving laterally like this right here because that track bar cannot control the, the movement of the axle anymore. So instead of it just running at that arc, it goes just back and forth like this, death wobble. Now, track bar is the number one culprit, but there's other things that can cause it. Let's move off over here. Lower ball joint, 
upper ball joint, those can do it. So if they're wore out, the knuckle will start shimmying like it's right here. So upper lower ball joints could cause the death wobble. Now think about something, all you uh, proponents of having dual stabilizers. If this thing right here is going like this right here, your steering stabilizer is located right here. Let me put it back on real quick and I'll show you guys. So see the white right there? That's your steering stabilizer. It doesn't matter if you got a single right here, a single up here, or a dual up here. And notice what it's attached to. It's attached to the axle and to your tie rod, okay? Keep that in mind. So, let's just assume death wobble by track bar, okay? Track bar is located from here all the way up to right there. That track bar's job, as I mentioned a moment ago, is to position the axle laterally to the frame, right? Right. So whenever you get that death wobble because of a bad track bar, your whole axle is moving back and forth like this, right? If your whole axle, whole axle, boom, here, boom, there, if that whole axle is moving back and forth like this right here, guess what? That steering stabilizer is going along for the ride. It ain't fixing it. The steering stabilizer is going right along for the ride of the whole axle going back and forth if your track bar is allowing that axle to move from that type of death wobble, okay? Guess what? The steering stabilizer ain't gonna fix that. Now, let's assume death wobble by ball joints, okay? Ball joints located again, I will emphasize, ball joint located there on the lower C in the knuckle. Upper ball joint located right there on the knuckle in the upper part of the C. So if a ball joint goes bad and you got death wobble via ball joint, you've got movement like this. Notice you got movement like this. What's where's that track? Where's that uh, steering stabilizer? It's right there. Does that have any effect? Is that steering stabilizer doing anything for that movement right here? Not a none zero. Now we're looking at the pitman arm. Pitman arm comes down and joins the uh, drag link. And this right here is where you turn this right here back and forth to center your steering wheel, which obviously I have not tightened up yet because I have I just centered the steering wheel a few minutes ago. So I haven't tightened these up yet. So, pitman arm, tie rod in for the end of the drag link. Let's just assume this is bad and you're getting balanced shape because of this whole thing right here moving back and forth. So that comes over here, connects to that knuckle there, and if that right there is bad, and then you get the shimmy and shake here, is that doing anything for that? Because this whole suspension is moving, the whole uh, steering geometry is moving via this right here. This is connected to the tie rod, not the drag link. You're going to get minimal help out of that thing right there if you get your shake from here. Okay. Now let's talk about potential death wobble from bad tie rod ends. This is where you might, might, might get a little bit of help. Right here, tie rod in. That thing right there is bad. Your front tire is going to shake like this. I'm talking pivoting back and forth like you're turning your steering wheel back and forth. You're going to get your shake shimmying back and forth like this right here. But you got two things working for you. you got a tie rod in and you have the upper part of your drag link, which will help control that one wheel right there. Or that one knuckle, whatever you want to look at. So if you've got a bad tie rod in and it's doing the shimmy shake right here, that it's like that knuckle is moving. Here's your steering stabilizer. Is it helping that knuckle right there? Is it helping that joint right there not move? Negative, not happening. Now let's come to the other end. Okay, same scenario, upper ball joint, lower ball joint. If they go bad, you're gonna get movement like this right here, top of top and bottom of the tire is moving rocking like it's right here along this axis that steering stabilizer is not going to help bad ball joints wobbling like this right here it just ain't going to happen okay so now we got our tie rod in so if that tie rod is bad now that allows this wheel right here to move back and forth like this right here too much so you'll get that shimmy like this right here is that steering stabilizer connected to that knuckle to control that shake negative ain't happening but what will it do for you? What will that steering stabilizer do for you if you've got shake here? It'll muffle the vibration transmission to this right here. It bouncing it back to your pitman arm, therefore back to your steering wheel. That's where that thing becomes a band-aid. If you're getting shake from your front end and you say that that steering stabilizer fixed your shake, 
you've got a problem, people. That two of these right here becomes a band aid. One of them I'll go along with because I've after put them on there. Okay, fine, whatever. I don't personally, I don't run them, but they do provide a little bit of a feel, I guess you might say, on the street or uh, as far as the turning, how the steering wheel feels. It does feel a little bit better. I'll give you that, but they are not a necessity. So I'm, I'm okay with one, but the people who run two of them, years being bling bling, it's all it boils down to. And if that two steering stabilizers has fixed your issue, you've got issues. Fix it right, people. Come on, be safe. So I was about to edit this video and I realized I forgot something. We got control arm there and control arm right there. And plus you got the same ones over there. So let's assume you got bad bushings and you got death wobble. If you've got bad bushing there, or there, that's going to allow deflection of your rotation of your front axle. Now, let's put a steering stabilizer on it. Let's put two of them on it. Is that going to fix that vibration of that? That? Eh, eh, not going to happen because that axle is now rotating this way. The steering stabilizer is going along for the ride. Does this sound like I'm harping on something here? Hmm, you think, huh? So now I'm going to take that stabilizer back off and I'm going to show you guys how to set it up. If you've got a dual stabilizer and want to go back to a single factory style, this is what you do to set it up. But also keep in mind for the people who want to relocate this to the above that, the setup is pretty well the same. Or even those who want to run dual stabilizers, you know, you're going to have two above the uh, tie rod here. The setup is pretty well the same. So take this simplistic setup here, keep the geometry in mind, keep the measurements in mind of how you get the measurements. Keep that in mind if you want to do anything above the uh, tie rod, okay? So, it's an easy thing. Just watch. So, I'm going to take that off and show you guys how to get measurements. So, there's the setup to come off of. You can see that the stabilizers are set up on top of the tie rod. That is a benefit for relocation purposes because that puts the shocks out of harm's way. If, like if you come through and you're wheeling, you hit rock or whatever on the tie rod, it's not going to get into the tube of your uh, stabilizer, your shock there. Now, am I a fan of dual stabilizers? No, I absolutely am not. Um, this whole thing on the internet battles and all the almost, I'm going to keep it rated PG. All the people in their discussions, I'll say it that way. Say, no, need dual stabilizers, need dual stabilizers. No, you do not need dual stabilizers. And I'm going to keep reharping this crap all the way through this video. If you need a dual stabilizer and it fixed a problem, you've got a deeper issue. Dual stabilizers are band-aids, not necessities. Now here's the contact points for your factory JK setup. You got one right here. This is coming off your passenger side front wheel. There's your spring. Your track bar connects here. Right underneath there, those two tabs. End of your steering stabilizer goes in there. It comes over and connects to this bracket right here on your middle of your tie rod. And notice, it slides everywhere. So there, if, whenever you purchase it, and if you've got your old one and you're just doing a, a heads up swap for your tie rod in, just mimic where your location is and you're good to go, as long as they're the same style brackets. But in this case, where I'm taking the dual setup off and putting a single setup on in the stock configuration, I want to do some uh, dimensions or some measurements. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your wheels are straight. Just like if you're going straight down the highway, no turns, no curves, no nothing, you're going straight. So therefore, this tire and this tire are both straight, okay? Which what that does is your, dry, your tie rod in here, it centers it in its natural position in the middle location. Then take your steering stabilizer and extend it all the way out. Normally I would do this with two hands, but since one hand's holding the camera. Pull it all the way out. Now that you've got your steering stabilizer extended all the way, tape measure time, bump it against that. Here, you're looking at about seven and a half inches, okay? Half of seven and a half is three and three quarter, right along in there. But you can see from my other setup, I did right here, so I've already done this once. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna video this to give you guys a little bit of education about this. So, right there is gonna be the middle of where the travel of the stroke of your steering stabilizer. I keep on calling it shock absorber, so that's the reason I get those head, those uh, pauses in my voice. So now what do you do? Take this, compress it. To about right there where it's centered. Now my mark is right at the edge of the tube right there. 
back under the Jeep now. Now remember the position of your tires, your steering wheel, and all that stuff. We're driving straight down the highway, which means both tires are pointed straight. Which means your tie rod is now centered with inside the Jeep. Remember? Okay. So now we're going to take our steering stabilizer. And I had to go get these bolts right here at the hardware store. They're at M12 by 150. M12, 150, and this was 60 millimeters long. And the reason I say that, I'm using the M12 by 150, is that this piece right here, that thread is an M12 by 150. For whatever reason, the bolt that's supposed to be in there with it was missing. So I went and got the proper hardware. And the proper hardware has that plastic insert so nothing comes loose. So you need the nylock style, M12 by 150 nut. So we'll just slide this back down. Take your steering stabilizer, put it up in that bracket, put the bolt through, right there. Then we take this, move this down, slide that bolt in there, and ta-da, we have now located where our bracket goes. But there's one other little thing you got to watch out for. And I kind of need to get the camera down to show you. Because it's actually that gap that's right there between that bracket. Top of the steering stabilizer and the bracket here and right there is where your track bar comes in so right there is where the bolt comes through that gap right there you got to pay attention to that gap because instinct says you want this bolt right here perfectly flat and level but if you do that and you can turn hard passenger what happens is that shock moves upward a little bit or that steering stabilizer moves upward a little bit and you'll bind into your bracket and therefore start stressing out the end of it dent in your tube and all kinds of bad bad stuff so what you want to do is if you take this bracket and rotate it downward just a tiny little bit, come back and look at your gap, and look, it's gotten a little bit wider. Now I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. I'm going to rotate this down like this. Now notice how wide that gap is. I'm going to bring it back up. You see it closes up the gap. So you got to find that sweet spot to where whenever you turn hard passenger, this tube moves up, and you don't want it touching this bracket right here. So I'm going to rotate it downward just a little bit. And now I'm going to get my 15 millimeter, tighten up his bracket right here, turn, uh, start the Jeep, and turn the steering wheel back and forth. One, I check my travel, so whenever this comes in here, where does it stop at? If I turn uh, full driver, extension goes all the way out, extending the steering stabilizer. Do I get full travel that way? And my gap here, does it ever contact when it turns a uh, full passenger? Okay, so. 15 millimeter. I'm going to tighten this up or snug it up good because I don't want it too tight yet in case I have to move it. So I'll be right back. Now it's just a good hard snug. It's not crate down tight yet. So what I need to do now, I'm going to start the Jeep and turn hard driver, which will, which will stretch the shock this way or the steering stabilizer and fully extend it. And I need to check that and see if it's bottoming out the shock anywhere or the strut or shock absorber, whatever it is and be sure it's not completely bottoming it out on extension then i'll turn hard passenger and check it and be sure this part right here isn't bottoming out on the body of the uh, shock of the steering stabilizer and also when i turn hard passenger when this thing will rise a little bit and i have to check a gap that's up there cool cool Okay, you see I've turned hard driver right there, so let's crawl on under and check some things. So the first thing I want to check is the extension on this right here. How do I do that? 
I'm just simply gonna grab hold of it and take it off. Now, right there's where it was. Do I can I pull it out anymore? Yep, I still got plenty of travel on that, so I'm not overextending the steering stabilizer. So let's push that back in. Put that back in place. Slide that back on. Now let's check our gap that's over there. Okay, you can look. We got plenty of gap right there. It's not contacting anywhere. We'll check underneath here. We still got you there. Yes, yeah, somebody's gonna call me out. You ain't got the belt sign. They ain't tight. Well, so what? It ain't gonna make any kind of difference right now. And yes, you're also correct. I don't have the boot on yet because I'm checking it out before our final assembly, okay? Now, I'm going to start the Jeep up again, and I'm going to turn hard passenger, which will push your steering stabilizer inward. we got to make sure it doesn't bottom out on the body. We still got plenty of gap right there. Compression goes all the way. That paint actually goes beside there a little bit. So we got plenty of travel left there. We're not bottoming out. Now the important do we are we hitting up here? Now get your should I say get your camera up in here, but no, just eyeball it. And I got air gap right there. It's close. It's really close. So if I wanted to, I could tilt it down a little bit, but honestly, the steering stabilizer travels with the suspension all the time. It doesn't matter if it articulates this way, that way, straight up and down, whatever. The steering stabilizer is going along for the ride, so it's not going to affect anything with that tiny, tiny little gap you got right there by rotating that up. So we're not contacting. That's, if you look real close, you can see my finger moving back inside there, so we're good. So, right there, I can tie, well, take it back off, put my boot on, but uh, we should be good to go. So, what I'm going to do at this point, I want to turn again, hard driver, extend that uh, steering stabilizer out there, put my boot on, and tighten everything up. Yep, that's it. So, before I get everything tightened up, one thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put my nut washer on this side and I always like to use these big flat washers to distribute the load on those brackets so it's help protect them and when it comes time to tighten that up it ties to about 35 uh, pound feet of torque and I'll show you guys because this particular kit actually come with the uh, torque specs 35 foot pound torque right there right there see, see. Yeah, I just thought I was smart, didn't you? Over here now. Oh, where'd my boot go? There it is. Take that off. That's a drop down. Take your boot. Boingy, boingy, boingy. Yeah, I had to. Slide. Slide the ribs up on there. Then you take that. Poke it back through. One more and back inside the boot right here. You see it's got that groove that groove goes on this right here Right there and then take your Take it Get on there Slide that back on there Now you got plate flat right here, so that's good for that side. Then you take flat washer over here right there and again look at your nuts i'm using it's got the nylock 
M12 by 1.5 is your thread pitch for this factory piece. In case your replacement that you buy does not come with a buck nut. So, right there. Yeah, I'll just kind of hand tighten it for the moment. And while I'm under here, position that. And turn around. So, we've got this boot has a gap right there. Uh, I always tend to push it toward the back because it's aesthetically, I'd rather have it back there than up front. And I feel the gap is right here in the back, so now I'm going to take my zip tie and lock it maybe down. Roll it back here. And right here on your body, it tapers up to a larger diameter. I always like to keep this back right here, so therefore as the boot gets pushed back and forth turning it doesn't push it up onto the thicker part of the body and just kind of stays put it looks much more unison like that so there we go and i'll cut that off here in a minute so that's good and snug that stays put there and we'll cut the little tail off in a minute now take your nuts on each end of the steering stabilizer tighten it to 35 pound and you're done Oh, well, I'm pointed by tightening up down here. Before you torque this nut right here down to that 35 pound torque, torque this one down first. Because when you start laying the mojo to this one right here, torquing it down, your light will turn this whole bracket if you haven't tightened this one down first. So tighten this one down first, then that one back there to prevent this thing rotating on you. Because remember, this thing twisting back and forth positions a gap up here. Remember? There you go. Ta-da! Installation is complete. All bolts are tightened up. I even tightened up my drag link up there. And I got my pretty red diff cover where I changed the uh, front axle grease out in this thing. And it was low when I changed it, so it's a good thing I checked it. So let's go over one more time what can cause death wobble and what can fix it, okay? Let's go. Right there, the end of that bushing right there, it travels up through there. That's called your track bar. That's normally your culprit for death wobble. Because you got a bushing inside there. And you got a bushing inside there. Y'all say, hey, that's an old track bar. And you're right, but I've got a new one. I just haven't put it in yet. And I'm going to here in just a little bit. But that bushing right there can be bad. That bushing can be bad, or they both can be bad, which will allow that front end to move laterally like this because that's that track bar's job. It holds the front end centered of the frame. So, what do you do if you got a uh, death wobble by track bar? Huh? Huh? Did you say we put a, a stabilizer on it? A dual stabilizer? No, that's not it. Come on now. You're not paying attention. You gotta replace the track bar. So what else could cause death wobble? This slide over here. We got lower ball joints and we got upper ball joints. And you, if you guys go back to look at a past video to where I did the ball joints on this rig right here, you see that they were totally done. I mean, they had lateral movement, up and down movement. They had all kinds of movement. And honestly, I think, I'm pretty sure that's the bulk of the problem on this rig right here was the ball joints. But the owner of this rig said, replace everything under the front end. So, it got new ball joints, everything. So, so what do you do if you've got death wobble by ball joint, which will make your front end do this? I'm going to pause. Really, people? Someone out there said put dual stabilizers in. No, not dual stabilizers. What do you do? To fix that you replace your ball joints don't worry about your stabilizers are y'all catching on this is kind of a parody thing i mean i could really just keep this going okay but here's the deal if you've got death wobble fix the root of the problem okay dual stabilizers is nothing but masking the issue and if you do put a dual stabilizer on and it solves your front end shake you've got a problem okay so fix it where the root of the cause of the problem, okay? Stabilizers, single stabilizers, dual stabilizers, whatever, it's not going to fix your death wobble. It may mask issues. If it's masking any issues, more than likely it's masking a bad ball, a bad um, tie rod end. Because ball joints, they're going to shimmy where they want to shimmy. Track bar, the whole front end moves, including the shock, the stool, uh, steering stabilizers. I keep wanting to say shock absorbers. So, I mean, I could keep this harp parity thing going over and over but i'm not find the root of your problem fix that 
Subscribe if you haven't for some more good educational videos. And as far as comments, I know I'm probably going to get blasted for comments on this thing because people who know I put the dual stabilizers on my rig and it's been perfect ever since. Okay, I'm, I'm happy for you, but please find the root of the problem. I want you guys to be safe out there, okay? And many of you people out there who's more experienced than even me can put really helpful comments down that will help other people who are up and coming and learning how to do this hobby. So leave some great helpful comments, and everyone, I appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.